Picture a tomboy in lace That's Nancy with a laughing face Good evening and welcome to another episode of What's So Funny. Listen to those pipes. I've never sounded better, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, never felt worse, never sounded better. I am sick. I am the most sick I've ever been doing this show. Uh, but after trying to get Nancy Robertson on for years, <laughs> I was not going to say, when she finally says, okay, uh, I, I, I'm a little under the weather. So, Nancy Robertson, welcome. Thank you. Nancy with the laughing face. You've heard that song. Oh, I have, and I love that song. I It's a bit of trivia that I uh, apparently, and I, I forget the uh, the songwriter's name, but apparently when he wrote it for Nancy Sinatra, for Frank to sing, he gave her, he said, you know, I don't know well, how well this is going to do or, you know, where it's going to go, but the royalties are yours. So he gave away the royalties. Wow. Yeah. Well, like you, she needed them. I think but, it was Frank Lesser. I could be wrong about that. He wrote the music, but you know who wrote the lyrics? No. Come on. No, I don't know. Give me a clue. Okay. Uh, great film and TV comedian. I watched his show. Uh, it was before my time, but uh, one of the classic sitcoms. One of the classic sitcoms. Oh. Hilarious. He's bald. Wears glasses. Jack Benny? No. Jack Benny had Oh, no, hair. Phil Silvers? Phil Silvers. Phil Silvers. Wrote the lyrics to Nancy with You're the laughing kidding. face. Or at least he's credited with them. Yeah. No, it wasn't him that gave away the royalties. It must have been... Um, uh, Frank Lesser? Fra- Frank Lesser. Phil Silvers wrote that. Yeah. Nice. GC was funny. Yeah. I yeah. loved him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how many comedians write lyrics to serious songs. Uh, Charlie Chaplin. Did he? Yeah. What he was wrote uh, uh, Smile. Oh. Yeah. He wrote Smile. And uh, Carrot Top, I believe, wrote <laughs> Stairway to Heaven. Um, oh, there's a slew of them. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't <laughs> think of them off the top of my head. So, Nancy, one week till Christmas. Mm-hmm. One week exactly. I know. Uh, I know. Your betrothed, Brent Butt, uh-huh. has been on this show twice before uh-huh. over the years. Both times in December. What's the deal? I don't know. And now you are available in December. Maybe we're like... Little Christmas presents, or you are, or the or the ghosts of Christmas presents. I don't know. Let's no <laughs> oh, Christmas present ghost. No, because I don't want to be the ghost of Christmas past. I don't want to be a ghost yet. Period. No, exactly. Yeah. You are. Uh, you're just a present. Yeah, we are with your presents. You know what I am? I'm the little elf on the shelf. <laughs> I only just heard of Elf on the Shelf mm. at a theater sports show uh, a couple weeks ago. Is that that's a thing? Apparently. Is, is friends, it a toy? It's a parent. I have friends who have kids, and apparently, it's just, it's kind of maniacal. It just sits there and, and it stares, stares at, you. at you and makes you feel guilty and makes you feel shitty. <laughs> Good parenting. Yeah, I didn't need an elf. Just creepy elf looking yeah. at you. Whatever happened to the old fashioned way of making you feel guilty and shitty? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Parenting. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we, we'll get into that. Seventies parenting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that was a good parenting, I think. We're all too involved now. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't know. Well, I do with my dog. I'm obsessed with my dog. Yeah? I know what type of parent I would be. I would be obnoxious. So what does that mean? You take pictures of it all the time? and you Well, I don't take pictures of him. But treat it like a child? Yeah, absolutely. What kind? What kind of child? <laughs> yeah, what kind of child do you treat it like? <laughs> a very well-behaved, cute child? No, I mean... He's a, uh, a cross between, I think, a shepherd lab and a wolfhound. Okay. Yeah, so he's a sturdy guy. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, 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 that's a, a, a large-ish dog? Yeah, about the size of a lab. About the size of you? Yeah. Sh- wake up, everybody. <laughs> 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 Just putting everybody to sleep talking about my dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us more about your dog. Well, I was going to, when people ask how old he is, I was going to give it in months. Just like <laughs> people do with their kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's only true up until uh, one and a half, I'd uh, say. Right. Okay. Because then I always have to do math. Yeah. So what What is that in years? That's Twelve right. months in a year. So mm-hmm. twenty four is less than two. I, I, that's about as far as I can go. I could go up to three years. I could say thirty six. Yeah. Yeah. But then if somebody just throws out your twenty nine months, you'd have to stop and think about it. I am right. You now. don't automatically go. Okay, I know exactly what that is. 
29. That's two years and five months. Okay, you're good. There we go. You're good. Uh, you uh, do you do you do you like being um, credited mostly for corner gas? Um. Uh, or are you like I'm so much more. No, you know, uh, you got no. I mean, it's. I mean, I've done a lot more than that. But if I'm, you know, if I'm the most high profile thing, you know, that I've done has been that, and it did really well, uh, critically, and you know, and in, in uh, and the popular vote, and uh, uh, so yeah, no, I'm. Uh, listen, there was a time years ago where, you know, I just would have been thrilled with you know, getting four days on set, let alone six years of a, of yeah. a series and everything. Yeah, yeah. So who, you know, who am I to, you know, take it for granted and, you know, and get passe about it? No, I'm thrilled about it. And I feel very fortunate. So you are. Okay. Yeah. You are. It's stuck in your craw a little bit. I could tell. No, <laughs> no, it didn't. It's just, <laughs> no, I, that didn't come out. Oh God. No, no. I'm, I'm no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored. Yeah. As you should be. I love yeah. your character because she was Wanda Dollard, mm-hmm. not Dullard. Nope. Dollard was a grammar nerd. Yeah, Nazi, she was, yeah. And I can relate to that. Yeah. I love that. Are you, are you into uh, grammar and no. words? No, not no. at all. No. What? So <laughs> they allowed you to play this role? <laughs> Don't you love it when people ask you, like, what you have in are common like, with, yeah. the, with the role? I go, hey, they're acting. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, no, she was a brainiac. And there's a lot of times in the script where it's some of her vocabulary in the dialogue was, I... Then I have to need a little hand with this. <laughs> Could you write this out phonetically? Yeah, basically, and uh, and then I'd have to look it up, you know, to get a better understanding. And and uh, so I don't know whether that just got to be where they were messing with me, the writers' room or not. But uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, it worked. Yeah, that's been off the internet for a while. Long. Although time now. that movie, I loved the movie. Yeah, I did too. That was good. Yeah, I, I saw it on the big screen. Did you go? I did. Bless your heart. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I guess I think it's on. Crave TV now, maybe? Yeah. I should watch it again. Yeah. But I like that. Yeah, they aired it, um, was it, uh, I think they aired it again, I think it was two weeks ago, or uh, because of uh, Janet Wright's passing. And so the network was really great, and they ran it in her honor on a Saturday night and just kind of put their regular programming aside and and re-aired it. Yeah, that's sad. She she wasn't well even during the making of that. No, she she? wasn't. She, uh, her mobility wasn't that great, and, uh, but, I mean, you know, when she was doing her thing, she was amazing. Yeah. You know, so... She's yeah. just, uh, she was a powerhouse. We should say Nancy Robertson is sitting in another room for me. This is <laughs> also a first. It's nothing personal. I, uh, I forbid closeness. <laughs> I demanded it. Yeah. I said, I'll do this, but we cannot be in the same room. We have to be looking through glass at each other. Absolutely. Yeah. I, like, I kind of like, like it. Just like in Midnight Express. No, Whoa. not like that. Sorry. Oh, it's been a while since yeah. I saw that. They were looking at, through each other? It's a filthy scene. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I didn't want to pass on my germs to you, even yeah. though you're starting to get sick. Yeah, it's I just am that uh, t- season. It is the season. No, it is. Yeah. They say that uh, blues and colds have memory. That if you get a cold at the same time every year, like at certain events or like Christmas or you know, or at some point in the summertime, they say I don't know who they are. Yeah, I was going to ask. But I read somewhere that that it has a memory. I don't buy it. Okay. Yeah, I've been sick over uh, Christmas before, but see, not... to see, <laughs> yeah. see. Yeah, we'll just stop there. <laughs> but not uh, regularly. Uh, yeah. Are you a big Christmas person? Um. Yeah, I go in waves. I have moments where, um, or years where I feel more Christmassy, or either if I don't, if it's not all the way along the season, I have moments of feeling Christmassy. But it's kind of mostly nostalgic sort of things. I'm very nostalgic at Christmas time. About? Just when you're a kid. Yeah. And how exciting it all was and how it seemed that it took forever to come around and and uh, and now it just seems it's, you just pack up the Christmas <laughs> decorations and it's here again. So. Yeah. You, uh, you're from here, right? You're from mm-hmm. Vancouver. Mm-hmm. We rarely, if ever, have had a white Christmas. See, now maybe my memory is, when I, I thought we had them more often when, when I was a kid. They yeah, seem to be no. more frequent back then. These are movies then. that you're watching. You're confusing with your life. Oh, it's kind of sad. I know. <laughs> I don't walk around with like a, you know, a soundtrack in my head. And, yeah, avoid yeah. Christmas.
Yeah, I, I I saw a tweet where you said all Christmas songs should be sung by Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Rosemary Clooney, and one Irish Rover. And one, which one? I didn't care. <laughs> just as long as he has a <laughs> just, just Irish as long lilt. as it was just one. I didn't want all of them. You didn't want. No, it's I couldn't too much. take all of them. It's too much. Yeah, one is enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I met Rosemary Clooney. You're kidding. No. What was she like? I loved her. She was very nice. Yeah. Where did you meet her? At. Uh, Backstage at the Royal Theater in Victoria, British Columbia. How did so? How did you get back there? Uh, I, my ways. I'm a man about town. Wow. My dad was the band leader for her on this show, and he had worked with her a few times at some festivals in smaller group situations. Mm-hmm. So you know, I got to go backstage and meet her. She was very nice. Oh, I would have loved that. I always wanted to see her in the Rainbow Room in New York. Yeah, yeah. I always thought I would have loved to have seen that. Big fan. Huge fan. Yeah. I, her voice was just so original and like butter and so easy. That's what I liked about Bing's voice too. There was no effort involved. It yeah. just seemed like they could breathe and it would sound fantastic. Mm-hmm. Kind of like mine tonight. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I Not should... a whole lot, but a little bit. <laughs> I should record a Christmas album while I'm here. Why not? Everybody is. Oh, see what I can do now when we're in a different room? Can, I can have a coughing fit and just put down the levels. Nobody's the wiser until I mention it. <laughs> until you mention it. Yeah. You were supposed to step up there and talk I'm sorry while about I was that. coughing. You yeah. didn't give me the rules before. I, point, I knew you were going to do it, but I didn't know I was supposed to do anything. Oh, yeah. Just stare at me uncomfortably <laughs> while I do it. That's all right. I just want to make sure you survive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm enjoying the snow. So if you're listening to this on podcast from another part of the world, maybe. Uh, it is like Canada out there. It is. It's great. It's like we live in Canada. It is. There, we uh, in front of our house. There's this little slope, little hill, and uh, and I looked out the window this morning, and they're all doing they're all, like these old kind of like little sleds or crazy carpets or whatever, and they're just kind of going down this hill. It's kind of a pathetic little run, mm-hmm. but it was kind of nice to see them all out there. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, it might not last till Christmas. So. No, it's gonna rain. Is it? Yeah. But they've been saying that for two weeks. Who's they? They, the <laughs> same people that told you that uh, <laughs> flus have memory. You know, I had a flu shot this year. Oh, I've never had one. Well, Wanda. <laughs> you should have one. No. No? Well, I mean, I, 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 maybe I should, but I don't. But it didn't work for you because you've got the flu now. Maybe. I don't know what I have, but I'm, 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 I'm hot now, and I'm going to be cold soon, within the hour. Hot and cold? <laughs> hot and cold, hot flashes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know anything about those? Oh, be quiet. <laughs> I'm not so sure I'm not having one right now. And, want, I'm, being, and I'm being honest. <laughs> uh, I, I want to go back. Uh, so, oh, we should say that uh, you're listening to What's So Funny on CFRO 100.5 FM, Vancouver Co-op Radio. I'm Guy McPherson. And our guest this week is Nancy Robertson. You know her from The Delicate Art of Parking. But she's also been in other things, too. <laughs> I watched that movie, too. You did? I did, yeah. When it came out years ago or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, many, many years ago. When did it come out? That was just before I landed Corner Gas. Like we shot so it. It two, hadn't come out. 2002, two, three? 2003, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, was that movie improvised? Uh, I, yeah, some of it was. My part was heavily uh, improvised, which was fun. Um, there was a script. And then you played heavily off of it. And then um, when they shot it, they asked me to come back and they wanted to add another scene or two. And all those were improvised, Those the, the other scenes. Right up your alley. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That was your training. Yeah. Yeah. And I was right in the midst when I was doing a lot of improv, too. So the hopefully it was, you know, the, the, oh, all the mechanisms were still working. Yeah. You don't do a lot of improv now, do you? Mm-mm. Why? I don't know. You know, I just got out of it. I... Uh, you know, when we were shooting Corner Gas, when we would wrap and, and come back back home, I'd go in and I'd go right back down to the theater with Vancouver Theater Sports and and get right back at it. And then as the seasons progressed, I didn't because life just started to change. I was, all of a sudden, I had a, you know, a different home. I was getting more tired by the time we would wrap because we were, we were staying there longer because the episodes in increased. In Saskatchewan, yeah. yeah. So by the time we'd get home, I just didn't want to do anything. And then I also felt that because I hadn't been doing it at night, I had longer spaces of time when I wasn't doing it, that I would just tank. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I thought, ah, Did yeah. you? Is it a bit of losing your nerve? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. But I mean... it's so vulnerable, I guess. It is vulnerable. 
And um, and one of the things I kind of liked when I used to do it is that I, I wasn't scared. Whether it worked or not, I still took chances. I thought, oh, well, you know, I would love to go for it, regardless of what the outcome was. But all of a sudden, I did kind of lose my nerve. It's just because it's the muscle. It just wasn't, I wasn't using it as much because I was away on location so much. Mm-hmm. Well, do you think you'll ever get back? Well, I don't know. I mean, I go through ways where I'm very nostalgic about that too. I have a lot of great memories and a lot of good times there and everything, but it's been a long time. And Jay Ono, um, periodically, you know, will always offer mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and you I'm periodically welcome to go back. Turn them down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd like to, I'd almost like to, if I did it, I'd just like to do it quietly just to kind of go back in and. Right. So people there don't know who's on the show. And then you just come out and... Yeah, yeah, and just be like old times, which, I mean, I don't think people would care if I walked out or not. But, I mean, just for me, in the sense of... Don't make a big deal out of it. Yeah, because I'm not a big deal. So. You're a pretty big deal. <laughs> oh, goodness. But I just don't want to put... That would be, put more pressure on me, I think. So you are from Vancouver. What high school? Point Grey. Oh, yeah, Point mm-hmm. Grey. And elementary school? Carriage West Side Girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when did the acting bug hit? You were telling me before uh, we went on air that uh, you were a star in grade eight basketball. I was a guard on a grade eight <laughs> basketball team, all five feet of me. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I, I always wanted to do it. I was always I was I was always a horse's ass. I was always, you know, um, being a goof and yeah. everything. And I always kind of knew what, uh, that's what I wanted to do. But I never thought that I could because those were the times you, there wasn't an industry here. You know? No, I guess not. Uh, and so it's just like you were watching TV shows and and emulating your heroes. Yeah, I'd see anything Madeline Kahn did with you know all the Mel Brooks films and yeah, stuff, and I just worshipped her. And uh, and Harvey Corman. It was funny because growing up watching Carol Burnett, I loved Harvey Corman. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tim Conway was amazing, Carol Burnett was amazing, but Harvey Corman always flattened me as a kid. So when they, so he was one of the reasons I started when Mel Brooks had films. I was like, oh, Harvey Corman's going to be in them. High Anxiety, I remember yep. he was in that one. Blazing Saddles. Oh, he High was in that? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, briefly. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and uh, oh, High Anxiety, I loved that one. I thought that was fun. Oh, and what was the other one? I think it was another one, I can't remember. Yeah, but anyway, so that's, I knew that's what I wanted to do. You just make people laugh. Yeah. I, like your fellow performers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like he did on Carol Burnett. You know, the, the greatest uh, Carol Burnett cast member was Lyle Wagoner. Yes. And he, what is he? He owns a trailer company now for does he film sets? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't know what he does anymore, but he used to. That's what he. He was, he was an odd. Uh, 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 he didn't quite fit in on the show. But I think that kind of worked. Yeah, he was a, the straight man. Yeah. He was the Zeppo Marx yeah. of the Carol Burnett show. Have you watched the Carol Burnett show lately? Yeah, I have. And I don't think it holds up. Do you? Well, once again, the world, the the world, the word nostalgia comes up again, and maybe because it is Christmas, I get nostalgic about it. I, right. I, when I see Harvey Corman and Tim Conway, it holds up. I actually looked on YouTube because um, I wanted to see because I, I remember years ago seeing something about an acceptance speech when they would either Harvey Corman or Tim Conway would win an Emmy, and if you get a chance, look them up. Uh-huh. And because they're hysterical, their acceptance speeches are great. Oh, yeah, they're really good. So for that reason, and all, I, I, it holds up. You know, it's you know what I don't. I, I think the one that I don't think that I find that I don't that everybody adores. I appreciate it and respect it. But Lucy, I love Lucy. Mm, yeah, it took me a while. Only recently have I come to uh, respect it more. I didn't like it as a kid. Mm-hmm. Again, people. It was before my time, but it was Mm -hmm. on TV all the time. Mm -hmm. Because now, you know, I'm old, so everybody just thinks, boy, you're really old. No, you may both. Yeah. So, uh, but it was on TV. Didn't quite like it. I like the Lucy show, though. Oh, the one after Desi. Where she worked in a bank. Yeah. yeah. With Mr., uh, what's his name? It wasn't Drysdale. (laughs) No, that's that's (laughs) another great show, Beverly Hillbillies. See, that one I never glued to either. What? I know. I was never big on, on, on the Beverly Hillbillies. That was, oh, that was great. See, this is why there's glass between us today. Yeah. This is why we're glass. The one that really used to freak me out was Benny Hill. Freak you out in a bad way? He used to freak me out. Yeah. yeah. My sister and brother loved him. Yeah. And uh, he always kind of gave me the creeps. And I think kind of rightfully so. Yeah, when you you look back at it. When you do some reading upon him. He's chasing the buxom young lady around. In, in uh, fast motion. Yeah, riding around on a little bike and chasing women. And what's not creepy about that? <laughs> it's a different era. Yeah. 
uh, oh, we could reminisce about old TV shows for the for the next hour, mm-hmm. but we're not going to. So you were uh, you you had these heroes, mm-hmm. and in high school was there were you in the drama? Yeah, department? I did. Yeah, I uh, I took drama class, um, but I didn't do the school plays because I was busy too busy trying to be cool. Oh yeah, and how uh, did that work out? No, not so much. <laughs> um, but and then when I got out of high school, it was one of these things where. I was like, I know what I want to do, but I don't know how, how to go about it. Do yeah. I have to pack up and move? You know, and I thought, oh, maybe I'll take a leap. Maybe I'll go to, you know, New York is where I wanted to go over Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, maybe I'll do that. And then I got scared. And then 21 Jump Street started up here. And then all of a sudden, these acting classes opened up. And so... So they could hire locals? Yeah, it? yeah. Yeah. And there was... And it also, I think, for a lot of people like myself who wanted to be an actor uh, but didn't want to necessarily leave the city at that point, there was a place to go and there was a chance maybe to get some work because that seemed to be the thing that kind of started the ball the ball rolling. Yeah. And so, you did episodes of that? No. I never auditioned for it because I was just getting into it just as it was almost fading, it, fading out a bit because I was busy... Uh, taking classes. Okay. I was, before I got an agent, so I uh, took classes at the Peter Breck Academy, the Breck Academy of Acting by Peter Breck, who was on Big Valley. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. His best friend was Robert Mitchum, Bob. <laughs> Bob Mitchum. <laughs> this was here? This was here. It, well, did he have a connection to Vancouver? Yes, his wife was a dancer in Las Vegas who was originally from here, and when they got married, they, they lived down in, in, in Los Angeles, and he's, his family's from the Breck. Do you remember the Breck Shampoo? Mm, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, there was years ago. There was a shampoo that was like, it was called the like there was the Breck girls. So they were all models and stuff. Well, he his yeah. family was that family. Ah. But anyhow, so he met her, and then eventually, when they had a had a son, they moved up to Vancouver and settled in, and then he opened up an acting school. And he taught you. Yeah. Like him. Yeah, he did that. He taught acting classes. He, and, yeah. Because, yeah, when I think of great uh, actors, I'm not necessarily thinking of uh, cowboy actors, Hollywood cowboy but he, TV actors. But he did a lot more. He did a lot of other movies before that. That was just basically his big deal was being known for Big Valley. Mm. And um, so he had done a lot and he had a lot of, you know, the old Hollywood friends and stuff like Bob would come up and visit him. And and uh, and I think Gabe Miller... Um, uh, Gabrielle, she uh, went to the Brackett Academy too after I had been. Really, but she went to it as well, and uh, it was kind of the place to be. And he was a riot because he was just—he would say he would give references like um, that were so dated, but I understood them because I always watched older movies. And yeah. he would slap my ass as I'd get up on the stage and go, "Get up there! You're <laughs> you're a young Julie Harris," and everybody would be like, "Who?" <laughs> and the fact that he wouldn't even slap my ass yeah. was great because it wasn't politically incorrect because there wasn't, he was a type, that's just what he did. It wasn't inappropriate. Yeah. It wasn't, he wasn't in any way being, being inappropriate. It was just get up there. And he was, I oh, was, a, he was such a nice guy. He yeah. was so and, wonderful. And you learned stuff from him. Yes. What's the biggest takeaway from the Breck Academy? The, what's the biggest takeaway? Because you were new. You had no real training up to that No, point. no. I, well, I, I did minor training at the other yeah, Arts Club Theater. I did a little bit there, but then I'd gone to the Breck Academy. Once again, was just to go for it. was just basically, there's no point in trying out or working on it if you're not going to go for it. So, And he was great. He used to have showcases at the end of each year where mm. you'd perform and you'd bring, agents would come and you'd, that's how you generally get your agent. Uh, he is not with us anymore? No, he passed away of Alzheimer's a while back, which I'm really sorry about because I hadn't kept in touch. And mm. he and, uh, and his wife, Diane, uh, they lost their son, too, oh. prior to that. And uh, But uh, not that I want to turn this into a sad story, but no, he was great. I have, I have very fond memories of him. He was great. So at the time, you just wanted to be an actor of some kind, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's in Westerns or well, serious. <laughs> no, I know it yeah. wasn't about Westerns, but uh, any genre. Yeah. Because now you're pretty much a comedic actor, right? Yeah, I kind of knew that maybe that was where I'd have my better chance, and that's where I was more comfortable. Because you were always a cut-up. Yeah, because, well, yeah, I was a, like a smart-ass. Yeah. And uh, so I kind of figured that was the, the way to go, but I was comfortable doing either or, and that's basically what you did in acting class. You weren't, in fact, you did very little comedy. But, uh, and then I just, I did, then I got a regular job for a while. Uh, what'd you do? I worked for the cable company. Yeah? And uh, took abuse from everybody on the phones. <laughs> 
Oh, they, they're so horrible. People are horrible. Like if their cable would go out or yeah. the, the guy was late coming to connect it, and just the abuse that you would take on the other end. And How long did that last? Oh, a couple of years. Really? Yeah, I like the people that I worked there, but I hated the job. It was just God awful. <laughs> people threatening to kill you if you don't get your cable hooked up. Nice. Yeah, it was nice. But you knew who you knew where they lived. I did. I had their address right in front yeah, of me. Yeah, you could have reported them. No, no, I didn't care enough. Didn't I care. just wanted out. I just wanted out. And actually, that's probably the best thing that happened because I thought, okay, this is it. I can't do anything else now. Yeah. I know what I want to do. I'm not going to do anything like this anymore. So then you uh, went to Vancouver Theater Sports. Was that the next step? Uh, you know what? It was. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah. Did they have rookie leagues back then? Yeah, or? I started off in the rookie league. I wasn't in there very long. I was really fortunate. I got moved up pretty quick and then got on the main stage. Never looked back. And never looked back. I had an agent that, but what not much was happening. And then things started to pick up a little bit once I got doing improv and everything, which is great because I was better at auditions back then because I was fearless. Uh, fearless. Probably. Fearless. Right? Yep. Totally fearless. Do you still have to do auditions? Oh, God, yes. I don't do a lot because, uh, first of all, <laughs> there's not a lot out there for uh, women my age. There's very little. Um, and it seems to be that anything that I read for, that's of any kind of uh, quality or value goes to a U.S. actress because there's so little in this demographic that it, a high-profile actor down in the States, you're always competing with them because they're lacking down there too. So it's just it's just not a... I figure, you know, where's the beef? That'll be the next shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once I get into the yeah, next they're... older generation... <laughs> But it's, uh, it's going to see you on commercials for Wendy's for Wendy's or something. But it's just uh, there's not a lot that I want to read for. And the stuff that I uh, it's just it's just not um, a big pool right now. So I'm kind of laying back, laying low, Mm -hmm. doing uh, co-op radio, doing co-op radio. (laughs) Our guest is Nancy Robertson. The show's What's So Funny on CFRO 100.5 FM. I'm Guy McPherson. And, uh, Nancy, we've talked about Corner Gas. You did uh, Delicate Art of Parking. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to remember. Hic- hiccups. Mm-hmm. You were the star, I was the star of a sitcom. I was the star. Oh, those were the days, mm, right? The glory days. <laughs> you own this country. <laughs> the salad days. It was like, uh, it was very soon after Corner Gas. Too soon, I think. Yeah. Too soon after. Because Corner. people yeah. just thought, well, that's Wanda. Yeah. Not Millie. Yeah, well, I I didn't really worry too much about that because no? I, I I didn't um that just, the, the the that wasn't the general concern I think I think the concern was that it wasn't corner gas because it came right on the heels of it which wasn't our choice we wanted it to come on a little bit later okay so but I think that they thought well no let's keep it going while while it's hot but it was too soon it was like I always kind of felt like the parents divorced and. Uh, hiccups was, you know, the new girlfriend, <laughs> but you got to give her time. She's not trying to replace your mother. She's just, just give her time. Yeah. That same thing happened with Dan Vermeer. They both came, they both put us out right after and also back to back. So it made it harder to kind of disconnect from Corner Gas because the both shows were on right away and they also placed us right after each it's other. Very confusing. It was very also confusing. while Corner Gas was on, it seemed like every cast member was also in Robson Arms. Mm-hmm. It was like, well, aren't there other actors in this country? <laughs> Why are they getting all the roles? Well, <laughs> yeah, it, it was a it was a, a bit of a phenomenon on with <laughs> with the show, but it was our same network gal at that point. Uh, the wonderful Louise Clark. She was with CTV, and she was a network uh, person connected with Corner Gas, and she was also working on Rops and Arms. So double they, dipping, they double dipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do not approve. <laughs> well, she didn't ask you. <laughs> well, she, she should have. Shame on her. The suits, they know nothing, right? I say nothing. <laughs> lots of them know lots, and I'm sure some of them, just but like you, anybody else, you got to <laughs> listen to the talent. The talent. You and Brent. Brent was a creator of uh, both shows, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I Pick think there is something to be guy. said to, um, especially if you've done live performing, whether it be stand up or improv or theater, but especially with comedy, that you kind of, through just by doing it live and continuously over years, you kind of get an idea of what might work. So yeah. you, you want people to kind of trust you on that and go, well, it's kind of a known 
thing. You, maybe not a guarantee, but I think your percentages are better if you kind of adhere to what the experience was, saying, well, you know, if you're on stage every night, you're doing multiple shows or you're touring and doing multiple shows and you kind of get a feel for what might click and what works. Mm -hmm. So I do think networks should, and, and maybe they do. I've never had to pitch anything, so, but uh, I think you should listen to that. Why not? Hey, pitch something. Well, I... I I wrote a treatment uh, for something a while back um, with a really terrific guy, uh, Charlie Demers, um, and uh, former guest of this program. Yeah, he's amazing, and uh, he's all right. <laughs> Don't no, go overboard. He's amazing, <laughs> I adore him, um, and uh, uh, so that kind of floated around for a bit. But it wasn't. I never got it. It never went into the pitch room. It was pitched on behalf of a production. That's crazy. So it would have starred you. It didn't matter to me. Didn't matter. It, I would have I would have loved it, but it, it it wouldn't have mattered if it was for me or not. Yeah. Yeah. I would have wanted a part in it. Yeah. <laughs> but it wouldn't have to have been the lead. Yeah. Yeah. Would, see, suits know nothing. <laughs> you are gold in this country. <laughs> they should they should don't even read it. Just say okay, we'll do it. What do you want? It's got I, you and Charlie attached to it. Yeah. 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 And anyway, I, I, I really liked it. I liked the premise and, and Charlie's so bright. I mean, he's such a great writer. I'm not a writer. I, I, I don't know. I'm not good with structure or anything like that. I think I'm okay with punching stuff up, mm -hmm. but it was great to work alongside of him because he knew the structure and, 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 uh, so it kind of got things going a bit. I mean, I mean, it's not to say I wouldn't try it again. I yeah. think I probably will. You should. But I'll just wait till I'm inspired. <laughs> you can't wait for inspiration. <laughs> Inspiration is 90% perspiration. Is that the saying? I have no idea. You just got to sit down. What do they say? Do they say it? They say it. They said it. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> oh, there's a cough for oh, you. Oh, poor uh, thing. Huh? I said you poor thing. I know. But the voice, though. It's gold. Yeah. Gold. Burl Ives. <laughs> I love the old references. <laughs> silver and gold. Burl yep. Ives sang Silver and Gold, and he was also uh, Frosty? No, he was also... He was Frosty. No, no, he was, he no, was, he was another snowman. He was the, the snowman in Rudolph. He had a chapeau. I remember that. That's French for hat. <laughs> yes, I told you. Be your translator. Multilingual. Uh, hey, what was the 11th hour? That was... Uh, that was a, on TV. Yeah, it was. That was years ago. That was uh, on the CBC. Pre-9-11. Pre-9-11, it was. And it was on the CBC. The and, Mother Corp. The Mother Corporation. And that was created by Ian Boothby. Uh, fellow uh, improviser former and, guest on this and program. Form, yeah and a, now a, an amazing well he's always been an amazing writer but he's also I think the head writer for the Simpson comics now yeah and, and Futurama maybe yep, yep yeah and so he and Roger Fredericks created it and wrote it and it was myself Ian Roger uh, Randy Schooley he's the best Randy yeah yeah he's gold why am I saying gold a lot? Good <laughs> Lord. Um, yeah, no, he's great. He was amazing. And um, yeah, so we did one season of that. And it was like a sketch? Yeah. Sketch show, a lot yeah. of fun. That was, was your first time on regular TV? Yeah, and when, that was based on uh, an improv show we did for theater sports that Ian created. And so then he pitched it to the CBC. I think he pitched it. I don't, or, I don't know where or if they were interested, but it did really well. It was a really good show uh, for Vancouver Theater Sports. And then... Uh, it got made into a sketch show. Wow. Yeah. And are you nostalgic for that? Yeah. Did you ever go back and look at it? Uh, no. Oh, no, that's not true. I, ha I have looked back at it. And, and what are your thoughts? Um, I thought it was, I thought it was really young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I thought. Green or just young? Both. But I, I had a lot of fun. And there was, I, and I, I, when I look back at it, I remembered all the, uh, they had the wardrobe department that was all dusty and, and in another room. And I remember them trying to uh, convince Ian and Roger to write a show where we could wear one of the Irish Rovers costumes <laughs> because it hadn't been used for a while. Because <laughs> that was filmed here. <laughs> yeah, it was. Right, the Irish yeah, Rovers yeah. show. My dad was in that band. Good God. Yeah. Never met any of the Irish Rovers, though. <sighs> but you met Rosemary. Rosemary. That's worth at least two. Two Irish rovers? rovers. That's a, at <laughs> least. So did you get to wear the costume? No. No. I think I wore one of Bruno Gerussi's uh, 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 medallions. medallions. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I was playing uh, Da Vinci of Green Gables. Oh. It was a crossover between Da Vinci, uh, Chris Haddock's Da Vinci, yeah. and Anna Green Gables. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I couldn't say the word bang in that scene. I remember that. Really? Yeah, because she was a tough talking... Uh, <laughs> PEI gal. I bet you now you could, right, on CBC? 
Was it just a product of the time? It was a product of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, of course you can say bang. You can say anything. Pretty much now. Pretty now. much. Like, even now, like, on the on the, the major network shows, shows, you can say, can I say it? Go ahead. You can say fuck, and they bleep, they, they, you oh, they know they're it doing out. it. They yeah. just bleep it out. Yeah. But we shot an episode of... Um, we'll bleep that out. Corner, <laughs> of Corner Cast, where my character, Wanda, gets drunk, and they weren't allowed... I, they weren't allowed to show my character actually drinking to get drunk, but they could show her at the end result being drunk. They were so it was a whole different. That's ridiculous. And it just and it wasn't that long ago, but it really shifted. It really changed when Corner Gas was over. What you could get away with. Yeah. I remember one time somebody. Um, what was it? I don't know whether it was Corner Gas or Hiccups. It was Hiccups, and somebody said I was reviewing it and said, you know, well, it's not nearly as edgy as uh, Louis C.K.'s show. What? Well. <laughs> well it's a good comparison. <laughs> well, Louis C.K. was on cable yeah. at the time, and you could get away with anything. We were prime time, you know, yeah. major network. We couldn't get away with anything. Was this a review? Yeah, yeah. In the paper? Yeah. Reviewers. Some are the, reviewers are the worst. Some of them are the shits, and some of them are great. Yeah, it's not as edgy as Louis C.K.'s show. I know, and I'm thinking that's oh, okay. Got it. They don't really go into the same compartment. Then. Yeah. Different times, though. Yeah, you couldn't say bang. No, couldn't say bang. Uh, and I really wanted to. You really wanted to? I really and, wanted to say bang. And, of course, you did drink to get drunk in the scene, but you, you just couldn't do it on air, right? Oh, I was hammered. Yeah, you were hammered. Yeah, I was hammered. You're a method day. actor. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have... Uh, I don't know what all those things mean, but do you, do you follow any particular uh, method of acting? Like, no, the one like th- what uh, the guy taught you, Brecht. Uh, Peter, Brecht. Peter Breck. Yeah. No, I, the one thing that I kind of do, which probably isn't a good thing, I'm not great at rehearsing uh, for camera. I'll, like I'll rehearse, I'll go through the, you know, I'll go through the blocking, I'll hit the point, so you know, I'll give a little bit. But I kind of do better when my back's against the wall, and maybe that's from doing years of improv. That I would rather wait till the camera's rolling and they're actually we're. We're actually shooting a scene. We're actually doing an actual. Then take. you're going to get a a real response. That's why I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do the uh, your co-stars feel about that? Well, everybody was different. Uh, there were some that were the same that would do the same, and there were some that just gave it. Eric always gave it. That was uh, Mister Mister Eric Peterson. Name? Yeah. I know it's yeah. Eric Peterson. Yeah. He was Brent's dad. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to think of his character's name. Yeah, right? and I think sometimes you know, but. But I've had it on lots of time on lots of sets that didn't that a lot of people were the same way. I just but I just I never gave it. Even when I did some plays, like when I used to do some plays, I wouldn't give it in rehearsal. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't. I, will I would not give it, give it. I would give enough, but I also because I didn't know what I would what I was going to do with it until I actually needed to do something with it. So this became a conscious decision on your part, kind of. Like yeah. it, maybe it started out as just you felt uncomfortable giving it. And then uh, you found out, hey, this works. Or did you go into it? Is that what they taught you? I know. You? I always, it not, wasn't what I was necessarily taught that. I just kind of thought, 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 well, it's more technical. Let's just wait till it happens yeah. and maybe it makes it fresher. Uh, whether that worked or not, we have no idea. <laughs> that is left to the, the viewers and to the critics. But I just felt that it was just, uh, it just felt more natural to do it that way. It's like Alan Iverson. This is just practice. <laughs> it's a sports reference. Thank you. Okay. This practice, who cares? You are a pro, and you will deliver the goods when they say action. Well, I don't know about that, but I think that my goods would are are better than they would be if I had given it before in rehearsal. So yeah. whether because you couldn't because of your improv training, you couldn't uh, replicate what you did. Yeah, I could, but I kind of wanted just to surprise myself and just kind of just it just make it feel like it was all fresh. Ah, yeah, fun. Hey, so when you started at Corner Gas, uh, did you know Brent? Not very well at all. Because I, at that time, yeah. there was a big divide between improv and stand-up. Yeah, yeah. And he probably uh, looked down his nose at uh, the improv community. Maybe. I don't think. <laughs> you never asked? I, no, I don't. I, uh, he knew of me, and I knew of him. Okay. Um, just because of the two different worlds. But no, I didn't know him. I mean, I had met him at various big ga- gatherings like hi nice to see you that type of thing and then carry on and then they were doing the auditions and um the casting director was the one who recommended that i come in and see them so and you said one day he will be mine <laughs> well i thought one day that part will be mine <laughs> and then the rest was history yeah it was a good part to 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 read for mm-hmm. and you, you know i think i've asked brent this too like your expectations at the time were probably you know 
most things don't last on TV. No. You go, Especially maybe, Canadian. maybe yeah. you'll get the pilot. Maybe you'll get a few episodes or a season and that's it. And then you guys lasted forever. You're still on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, that's why, that's why the hiccups and, and Dan for mayor doesn't matter. Right, you could have waited ten years, and you're still up against Corner Cast. No, but here's the nice thing, though. Now we get a lot of uh, response for hiccups. Now, oh yeah, a lot, yeah, from all around the world. People, where are they seeing it? They're seeing it on YouTube. I got I got letters the other day from England, from the states. Wow. From uh, and people actually saying, you know, I feel bad. I didn't give it a chance. And I bet you they're, the same thing's happening for Dan Vermeer, where I didn't give it a chance, and now that they really like it, and they want to know, you know, where's season two, and we'll go, well, it's on Crave TV, because Crave TV airs it. Yes. Um, but uh, but you said YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube? Yeah, both seasons are on YouTube, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And was Dan Vermeer two seasons as well? Yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. Yeah, no, it, I guess also people want any, you know, to... To be the first to like something or, you know, that the masses aren't talking about. Mm -hmm. like, like they discovered this thing, yeah, even yeah. though that it was. A... I kind of like that, too, though. Yeah. I'm like that with my British shows. Yeah. I love British television. So then you can yeah. tell people. Yeah. And everybody watches The Crown now, but now I won't because I'm like a child. I've never heard of it. Okay. Well, it's this big Netflix series that everybody's loving. Now, I'm so used to being kind of. Leading the way. Yeah, and so now this one's gotten away from me, and now I'm like a pouty child. Well, I don't want to watch it right now. Yeah. I'll watch it when I'm ready to watch it. I'm busy watching another British masterpiece. How good can it be because everyone knows about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see. British masterpiece. Uh, but do you watch American shows too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but your preference is the yeah. uh, British. Yeah. Uh, like the period pieces? No, no, uh, the procedurals. Like uh, Broadchurch, Happy Valley, River... Uh, Scott and Bailey. I think they're fantastic. I think they don't shoot as many episodes. They put a lot of money into the way they shoot it. The actors are amazing. Everybody looks normal. Mm, I've never heard of any of them. Oh, they're they're amazing. Are they they're anything like Benny Hill? Little less creepy. <laughs> little less creepy. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, I love uh, Sherlock. That's I the, love. That's Sherlock. the only British. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. a great show. Love Sherlock. Yeah. Yeah, so when you got the Corner Gas, when did you marry Brent then? How soon into the uh the run? I think I think we in between season 3 and 4. Yeah. Yeah. And did that change everything? Everyone no. hate you no. after that? Oh, I don't know. Not that I'm <laughs> aware of, but it 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 changed. It actually uh we stopped hanging around as much on set because you're married. Because we're married. Yeah, why would you hang around and, with your uh, wife? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but also just to, to, so everybody could have access to him. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he was the head guy and so people could have access to him and it wasn't me in the way. Yeah. And, uh, so I made myself kind of scarce, you know, scarce when, you know, at, at work we would just do our thing and then, and go around and, uh, no, it, it didn't, it didn't change anything. You know, it didn't feel any different doing scenes with him from when we weren't an item, from when yeah. we were, were an item. Some people would like to say, oh, I see the difference. It's like, well, no, I think you're you're kind of seeing what you might want to see. You're reading into yeah, it. Yeah, you're reading into it a yeah. bit because it's absolutely, completely the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you didn't mind when he had the love scenes with Lacey? No, I teased her about it. That, <laughs> the, the major makeout scenes they had. Yeah, major, <laughs> yeah, yeah. major makeout little, scenes. A little kiss on the cheek or something. That was all that was allowed back then on CTV. <laughs> I know, I'm sounding like, sounding like everybody was in twin beds. But it kind of <laughs> felt like that. Now when I see the change and how quickly it's changed. For network, what you can get away with and what we, what we couldn't. Well, when did it end? Two thousand nine. Uh, nine. Yeah. Which is seven years ago. Yeah, isn't that incredible? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then we made the movie two years ago. Yeah. So so glad that you made the movie. Mm -hmm. I I was glad. I thought it was. I thought it was really well done. I mean, it was. And uh, and it was a fun story to you know to tell, and everybody had a blast doing it, and uh, it was like a really fun grad reunion. <laughs> yeah, you know, like your first grad reunion. Mm -hmm. Going back to the old town, Rolo. Yeah, Saskatchewan. Yeah, you were out there. I was out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple times mm -hmm. I was out there. And what's there now? Same. Same. The, Same the, thing. The gas station is there. No, they, they tore that down. Why would they do that? Because people would come and want to see it. Well, because it's a bit of a liability. It's just sitting there, right? And it is a set. It's not a real building. Yeah, I think yeah. people think that it was a real... I mean, we did shoot there, and we did interiors and exteriors there, but it wasn't built for 
real business. And so the producers had to keep paying the lease and the upkeep and everything, and uh, it was like a safety concern. So I think bits of it are in a, are going to a museum oh, in the yeah. prairie somewhere. Yeah, so that's gone. But the Dog River Bar, they went and rent. They went to well before we went back. Just before we went back to do the film, we couldn't film in there because uh, they got all high, you know, high and mighty and poncy. They went and upgraded the bar and made it some flashy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't the old time bar. So they had to replicate it in studio. In a set. Yeah. 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 In Regina. Yep. Uh, good times. <laughs> they were. <laughs> but, you know, in that sh- in that store, I remember, maybe I'm misremembering, but. The products on the shelves of chocolate bars or whatever it was, mm-hmm. were they actual products? Yeah, some of them were. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to eat them. No, no, they were all taped down, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, and some of them were just like foam inside of the wrappers and everything. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I just, I thought maybe they were sort of generic. They weren't yeah, real. Yeah, some of them were. Yeah, some of them. Real products. Yeah. But I, I've since seen many TV shows where all the products are shown. Product placement. Oh, is that what yeah. it is? Okay. And you so, get paid money. I'm so naive. <gasps> oh, but you're darling. You're <laughs> d- <laughs> How's your slow cooker? My slow cooker. I'm so glad you asked. I tried it for the first time today. Yeah. First time ever? First time ever doing a slow cooker meal? Yeah. Well, it tasted like the lining. It's like the, It was this kind of weird nonstick lining, which I'm assume, assuming it's not the unhealthy kind that they were like saying, you know, causes all these horrific diseases that they changed it. But they that's were, all it they tasted. They were saying? Yeah. Who? They, yeah. you know who they are, yeah. and uh, uh, it tasted like the lining, so it was not successful. Did you wash it ahead of time? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, well, I then did. it shouldn't taste like the lining. But I would it think. did. I'm not blaming it on me. I'm not taking the heat for this. You know, I think uh, we we had a big slow cooker, but we would make small meals in it, and they were always burnt. And then I realized, oh, you can get a small slow cooker. You weren't using, you weren't utilizing all of the cooker. Is that it? Yeah, there's too much heat going around. Yeah, so you know something about this. No, a little bit. <laughs> Are you ever going to use it again? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you got to. I'll give it Put a it in go. in the morning, boom. What you do get... you think, folks? Write in, send cards and letters. <laughs> Should I use the slow cooker again? What was the meal? Chicken, Moroccan chicken. Moroccan chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just okay. It was just okay. Yeah. Uh. That's disappointing. I'm it sorry to hear that. Well, I know. I don't want to bring your night down. You're already not feeling well. Yeah, I know. But I'm, it's like the- Did I ruin ad- Christmas for you? It's I'm really the, sorry. No, it's the adrenaline rush. I've asked guests about performing sick before, mm-hmm. and they say, well, you're just okay when you're on stage. Mm-hmm. You get that adrenaline rush, and then as soon as it's over, it's mm-hmm. like, uh, uh. So you're I'm up. expecting that. I'm yeah, feeling okay. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to get home. So you've performed- <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've got a long drive. <laughs> you've performed uh, in- various stages of illness yeah 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 and, and it's true it's true it's you know you'd run on stage but before you'd be you know be backstage ready to run on you'd have a cranky migraine or whatever and just or nauseous and just feeling like crap and then you get on stage it disappears and you go back in for intermission you feel like you're going to die again then you go back on stage it's fine and then the show ends and you go home and you just go to bed and curl up in a ball <laughs> yeah because you uh, you have to be funny you got to be on. We have tried to be funny, whether you succeeded or not. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's the sickest you've been? Do you, anything just stand out? Nothing beyond just basically migraines. Okay. Yeah, wh- wicked migraines. Yeah, I've never had a migraine. Oh, they're, but, yeah, they're but, lousy. And you just got to, I mean, you got to get to set or you got to do your show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's worse things out there. Could be corns. Corns on your feet? You could have corns. That would be worse than a migraine? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm just trying not to be so self-involved by saying, poor me and my migraines. When there's <laughs> people out there with corns on their feet. <laughs> or gout, maybe. Corns and doubt. Gout. Gout. Okay, corns and gout. <laughs> I doubt I have corns. That sounds like a meal for a slow kicker. Yeah. So we said uh, this, the uh, the song, Nancy with the Laughing Face. Did you catch one of the lyrics in there? It's another reason why I chose this song for you. And the reason that there's not a lot of songs with Nancy. I know. That's why I love that song. There's one more. There's an Irish one. By the Rovers? Which one? <laughs> that would have been too good. Which one of those good. son of a bitch Rovers wrote That would have been me? too good. No, the, 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 um, the lyric, she takes the winter and she makes it summer. Aww. And that's what you've done here. Aww. Right? In this blizzard that we've got outside, you drove all the way. I did. I, I really did. appreciate that. I'm amazing. I'm a hell of a woman, guy. Yeah, it's like Helen Reddy. <laughs> no, Mac Davis. Mac Davis. He. Mac Davis saying. He lost his wife to Glenn Campbell. Really? Yep. Wow. 
I did not know that. Yeah. See, I know a lot of this kind of trivia stuff. You watched the Glenn Campbell documentary? I love... Yes, I did. Yeah. I think he has one of the most beautiful voices. Glenn? Yes. Or Mac? Well, Mac had a no great voice. He had a good voice. Yeah, but I think Glenn Campbell was extremely talented. I mean, I know he's he still was. alive, but I know uh, he's not doing... Is he? Well, not mentally right. anymore, but I he... I thought he passed. Mm, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I'll look it up. But anyways, he stole Mac's wife. Yeah, he... <laughs> Can you really steal someone? She's her own person. She chose. A club and a burlap sack is all you need. <laughs> There's actually kits out there that you can get. You wife steal stealing kits. Wives. Yes. Ah, I didn't know that. But yeah, she's a hell of a woman. <laughs> Maybe he wrote that for her. And then she went to Glenn. But um, Glenn was an amazing uh, guitarist. Yeah, session player and everything. That's yeah. right. With the wrecking crew. Mm-hmm. See? Yeah, look at us. I know. I Full know. of references. And covered in dust. <laughs> is that a lyric? No, but it should be. It should be. Yeah. If I was going to do an album, if I could sing or anything, that's what I would call it. Cover it in dust. Yeah, you did musicals, didn't you? No. Never? Oh, guy. No. Oh. <laughs> nobody would know. want me to. Could... I would love to. I would love to. I love singing around. Well, you just said nobody would want you to. Nobody would want me to. But so I, I don't think you're going to get it now. You say you'd love to. Well, they didn't really sell it. Well, why would they? Unless it was a musical about somebody who couldn't sing very well. Then I'm your gal. Yeah, like the Woody Allen musical. You uh, you can pitch that. A musical. We're just average people singing. Yeah. Middle-aged broad who can't sing worth a damn. Trust me, it'll be a hit. But really emotes because you are a com- comedy royalty <laughs> in Canada. And I turn the winter into summer. And you t- <laughs> With your laughing face. <laughs> My laughing face. Well, it's been a pleasure having you here. Oh, thanks, Guy. Thanks for coming in with all your illnesses and everything and, and keeping um, yourself separated from me. Yeah, that is my biggest uh, gift to you. Well, thank you. Just being in the other room. I'm wearing I kind of like this. I'm going to do this every week now. There is something kind of, you know what it's like? I feel like we're on uh, American Graffiti, the scene with uh, the Wolfman. Oh, the Wolfman. And he's got the popsicle, and Richard Dreyfuss is banging at the window, sees him through the the window, and his cover's blown. He's all of a sudden, remember, because he didn't, the Wolfman wouldn't admit to being the Wolfman in the film. He pretended he wasn't, and he said, I'll put through your request. Richard Dreyfuss goes to get back in the car, looks through the window, like there's a window that somebody could look in on us right now. Yeah. And he sees it. It, the Wolfman was a Wolfman because he starts doing his thing and he eats a popsicle. <laughs> what, what's the uh, purpose of the popsicle? Because it was summer and it was hot. So maybe the Wolfman turned the winter and summer. I don't know. I don't <laughs> I, I've that. wanted to watch American Graffiti again for a long time, but I haven't. You have? Yeah. 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 It, it's still good? Yeah, it's still really good. Yeah. I that and Jaws it. when it comes out. I've never seen Jaws. There's many, many... What the uh, hell? You have never seen Jaws. Well, you remember what you said about Crown? Is it because everybody else... Everybody was talking about the Jaws. Well, I think there's been a, enough time that's gone by <laughs> <laughs> where... <laughs> it was within the last year I I watched The Godfather for the first time. It was pretty good. Wow. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. Just the one or do you go the way to three? Uh, I I was going to because I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I was going to watch two because I heard that was pretty good too, but I haven't yet watched it. Well, ten years from now, you might want to watch a little film called The Titanic. I've never seen that. See, there you go. So watch it ten years from now. That doesn't seem like it's up my alley. Many, many great classic movies I've never seen. Apocalypse Now. Seriously? Seriously? Why would I? Why would I see that? Just for Robert Duvall saying. I love the smell, smell of, of napalm, napalm in, in the morning. morning. And see, Mar- I know it. I and know seeing, it. No, but and seeing the scene where Martin Sheen loses his mind in the in his room. I don't know that. Yeah, and he had a heart attack doing that one. Once again, another important bit of trivia. Really? Mm-hmm. He had yeah. a heart attack shooting that, Martin Sheen. Hmm. Yep, haven't seen it. Slapshot. Have not seen Slapshot. What have you seen? And I haven't seen, although I started to watch, and it was pretty good, uh, that uh, mockumentary, The Rock Stars. Spinal Tap. Spinal Tap. <laughs> See, I can't even think Jesus. of the name. You haven't seen Spinal Tap, and you host this, this show. Yeah, what are you going to do? You're sick? You I'm sick, right? No, I'm not, I'm not giving you a break on that. I'm saying since you <laughs> are sick, you should go home and watch some films. Lie in bed. I, I love films, yeah. But there's so many of them out there. Just not good ones. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Come on. I love uh, Lost in America. Albert Brooks. Yeah. He rocked. That was the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any of the chipmunk movies? I saw one of those, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Were you in one? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, 
I don't know. I should have been. Maybe that's something I'll land. <laughs> I should have been one of the chipmunks. Yeah. Five feet tall. See, but I can't sing. So I wouldn't get cast as a chipmunk. Well, no, not as a chipmunk, but, you know, a, a role. You know, I'm a chipmunk or I'm not, or I'm out. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Okay, well, uh, what's the one movie, though, that I should see? What's the homework for me? None that we've mentioned. Oh, well. It's just a classic, the one that you just love. Oh, see, now I'm on the spot, and yeah. when I'm driving home, I'll think of 10 million. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, Gone with the Wind? Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird? I've seen that. Love it. Okay, good. Love it. Because that, that's probably one of my favorites. Yeah. Christmas Time, Christmas Carol with Alistair Sim. Have you seen that one? Saw it last year for the first time. That's an annual. Yeah? Yeah, every year. But I know how it ends. I'm not going to watch it again. Well, guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. And yeah, okay. uh, Miller's Crossing. Never seen it. Oh, you should see that one. And I never saw the other one, uh, Scarface. Oh, uh, it's okay if you didn't see that okay, one. Okay, good. That's, that's, that's I never, okay. I never watched The Sopranos. Never saw Breaking Bad. I didn't see Breaking Bad, but good. I love I love um, uh, Better Book. Uh, Better Call Saul. Me too. Love it. Love it. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. What about um, uh, uh, Raising Arizona? No, haven't seen that. Have to see that one. Okay. That's amazing. All right. That's amazing. Still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. I will uh, take your uh, homework and uh, report back to the legions of listeners here, Co-op Radio and the podcast. If they're still awake, I think we might have lost them in our slow cooker talk. <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> no. No, no. Not at all. Well, I'm determined. I was really disappointed with my slow cooker. Well, I think you should give it another go. <laughs> I think you should watch some good Seriously. movies. Seriously. <laughs> I do, but they always taste like the lining. Uh, <laughs> okay, Nancy Robertson, thank you for uh, finally getting down here. Well, thanks for having me, and thanks for coming in when you feel like dirt. No, no, thank you for coming in when uh, it's a snowstorm. It's lovely. Are you winter. a night person? No, okay. I'm not. Well, I really then thank you for coming <laughs> in at this hour. <laughs> All right, next week is Christmas, so you know what that means. We're still on the air. And uh, hopefully I will have my interview with Lori Gibbs on Christmas night. Pre-recorded. I'm just going to say, are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> Thanks. Good night. Good night. <laughs>